Hello and welcome again to another edition of Air Force Hockey along with head coach Frank Serratore. I'm Brian German and the Falcons took on their two closest rivals in two of college hockey's perennial powers this past week. And uh, Frank, I think maybe it was a case of too many mistakes by the Falcons against two good teams. Well, you know, you just can't make mistakes against anybody in college hockey, let alone teams like that. They're going to exploit you. And uh, on Friday night against Colorado College, I, I don't think they beat us as much as we beat ourselves. There were years way back when where we just didn't have a chance. The, the, their athletes were just so superior to ours. Uh, they obviously have, have got uh, superior uh, talent individually now, the same as Denver. Um, but, uh, you know, um, our motto over the, over the years, over the last five or six years, has been power of team. And uh, we just aren't a very good team right now. And uh, let's go ahead and show you some of the clips from Friday as Frank and I talk about them here. And uh, first, you, well, first you of all, by the way, like uh, fans out there, um, if you're a Falcon fan, this is going to be a little painful. <laughs> if you're not a Falcon fan, enjoy. Yeah. Well, the first part won't be so painful because I thought you came out with a good jump in, in, against CC on Friday night and you, you get the first goal of the game. Would you? you know, and we did. And, and uh, the jump was good, and, and, but we weren't very good. We've still made a lot of mistakes. It's interesting, though, like when you're... It's amazing how mistakes can be masked if you're hustling and if, if you're pitching and they're catching. And that was the case. We, made, we, were, we were sloppy in the uh, first period as we were in the second and third, except we were faster. Like we, we had the jump, we were on them. In the second period, they had the jump on us and it was a, a combination, of, it was a bad combination. They had the jump and we were making mistakes and uh, they took advantage of us. But uh, that's an accurate assessment, Brian. I think you also uh, probably spent some time in the film room after that Friday game. Just, and like I said, I'm not trying to harp on things, but, but mistakes are happening that we're not used to seeing Falcons make. Yeah, why not harp? I was harping, you know, and uh, uh, no, we, we spent a lot of time. It's interesting, uh, uh, you know, the film the next day that we looked at, it, it, you know, the guys are sitting there and we're showing the mistakes and and it, it, like I finally stopped it and I just said, you know, guys, don't sit there like beat puppies or, look, or feel bad for yourself. You should be mad because the mistakes we made were just not picking guys up. Um, we're getting walked on a face off. I mean, like we're, we're, we're dying. We died of self-inflicted wounds. And, uh, and uh, I said, you know, we've got to be better at Denver tonight. And, uh, and I thought we were. I thought we were a little bit better uh, at Denver, but, uh, but not good enough. We're not there. And, well, we're probably not going to be there for a while. Right. We can show you some of the uh, some of the film now from the Denver game as well, and, and that a different sort of game, more of a defensive battle until things until late in the, in the third period there. But like you said, I think I listened to you on the radio after the game. You you were more pleased, not totally pleased, obviously with the with the loss, but more pleased with your team's effort on the side. Well, I just thought we were dialed in. We were just dialed in. A dialed in better against Denver. We weren't dialed in. It's almost like we got this attitude that we can just show up and it's going to happen. And I like, I, I really think you go through and kids are kids. I don't care if they're at Bemidji State or they're at Air Force. And it doesn't, you know, I'm a Bemidji State grad, so that's why I fire that out there. My brother's there. But uh, um, you come off a championship season and I, I think you go through the off season. We won the regular season. We won the playoffs, won the NCAA tournament, gave Boston College the best game in the NCAA tournament. You come back and you go through the summer and everybody's congratulating you and, and, and you're champions, you're getting your rings and, and you come out in the preseason polls. And I really think that, that you become vulnerable. You start, you forget like, you know, how hard you had to work to make that happen. The close calls we had, if we didn't win that game at Robert Morris, the last game of the season, we don't win the league championship. Um, we forgot, you know, uh, UConn had us, had us here in the quarterfinals and uh, we come that far from not making it uh, to our own final four. And, uh, you know, I think we forget how good of a team we had to be to accomplish that. And um, you come back in and, and uh, you, you blindly, I don't know, I think it's just, uh, you think it's going to be, uh, the players think it's going to be easier than it was or there's some sense of entitlement. And um, when you go out with an attitude like that, you, you walk into machine gun fire. Sure. And uh, our deal over the last five or six years, it hasn't been personnel it's like we, we it's not like we have superior personnel every night like we've been when we've been successful at the end of the year in the ncaa tournament the playoffs atlantic playoffs we've been a superior team and uh when you play anybody let alone denver and cc let's use them for an example i mean we're playing them on paper they've got nhl draft choices and lots of them right. and uh, there's a reason why they do and we don't and uh, when we've had success against those teams, they've had, on their side of the ledger, 
they've had, they always have the superior personnel on paper. But on our side, we've been the superior team. Um, the other day, they had the superior personnel and they were the superior team. Bad combination. We can't be that. We've got to be We've got to be the better team in the, in the sense of team. All right. Now you go from the frying pan into the fire, so to speak, as you go into Atlantic hockey, hit the road this week for one game at Canisius and then another at Robert Morris because of the three-game crazy schedule sort of thing. But um, how do you get your team to, I don't know if you want to put these games behind you, obviously learn from the mistakes you made against these two teams, but it's time now. This is Atlantic ah, hockey. We don't put anything behind. And you know what, Brian? Um, we need to make steps. I mean, like... You know what, one thing I have gotten, and it doesn't appear that way, but I'm getting, as I get older, you get a little bit more patient, and you see, like, as long as you have good kids and they're working hard. I mean, you know, where do we want to get to? If we put everything on, we've got to win on Thursday, or we've got to win on, on, on Saturday, or we've got we've to sweep, I mean, that, that's the wrong approach. I mean, we've got to get better. I mean... Uh, we gave up over 40 shots to Denver and CC. When was the last time we gave up over 80 shots on a weekend? Dave Toller can probably look that up. I can, what decade ten, that it was, was. It was 10 years since you've given up back-to-back -back 40 shots. Oh, my Lord. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, like, we're, we're leaking oil out of every orifice right now. I mean, I'll tell you what. Our face-offs. Horrible. I know the second period, Denver won 23 face-offs. We won eight. I mean, so you got these teams. That's possession. That's possession. Now, you get on the power play. I mean, if you win the draw on the power play, you're in zone. You, you can make some things happen. If you lose it, it's going 200 feet, and the other team's got momentum. On the penalty kill, you start every special team situation with an end zone faceoff. On the penalty kill, you lose that draw. Now you're giving the Denver Pioneers an opportunity to have two minutes on the power play. And let me tell you, you give them the puck, they don't need two minutes. Right. And they, they showed proof that they proved that on, uh, on Saturday. So, I mean, our, our faceoff, we gave up. We gave up two face-off goals, one against Colorado College, one against Denver. Gave up, not only did we lose the draw, but we lost our men and gave them a goal. Um, we were a minus on the special teams both nights. Denver got two power play goals on, uh, on Saturday night. Um, so, I mean, like, we're giving up a pile of shots. Part of that is possession. We got to get, get the puck. We got to compete. And, I, and you know, uh, that, to me, is indicative of of your compete level. I mean, that's just man against man on the dot. I mean, who wants to puck more? And uh, obviously it's not the guys in blue right now. And uh, uh, we've got to compete harder. Um, we've got to play better defensively. Uh, our, our special teams need to start to perform. Um, we're capable of, of having a, a good penalty kill. Um, and, and the goals that we're giving up on the penalty kill um, are goals that, are just, that we have designed uh, to stop. Uh, the last one guy went around the net and uh, made a half board to point pass right by our, our strong side top guy. Can't have that. I mean, and our guys are looking. Now, this is all the bad news. That's all the bad news. Right. The good news is when you're looking at the film, this is nothing we can't fix sure. if we want to. Right. If we want to become a better team, this is nothing we can't fix. Now, I'm, you're not going to fix it in two days, right. but I mean, like, but we need to make some steps towards that. And uh, to be honest with you, like, we're such a mess right now. We're such a mess. Like, if we can get this thing straightened out, uh, you know, by, by Thanksgiving or, or early December, I'll be a happy camper. Now, that doesn't mean we can't win some games between now and then. But, but I mean, you minimize mistakes. And, uh, and also, hey, you know, how about poor Torf? I mean, like, uh, you know. Who played quite well, by ah, the way. I mean, you can't given, fault given him. Shots, right? I mean, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for Torf, Colorado College would have had nine or ten. Sure. And um, so we're, it's not like we're, we're leaking oil and goal. Um, he's doing his job. And, uh, and we've got some, some personnel that are doing a pretty good job, too, uh, you know, individuals. It's not all gloom and doom. And, and uh, you know, the guys need to, to watch the play of, of John Cruz and follow John Cruz. You know, watch the play of a guy like Danny Weisenhofer and, 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 and play like him, compete like him every day in practice. And, uh, you know, so I... It's there. Um, I, I'm not, uh, no, I, I, I haven't given up on this team, and I won't give up on this team until they give up on themselves, and, and that won't happen either. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gloomy time right now. We may have some more tough times before the good times come, but uh, I'm telling you, fans, uh, don't count us out. Uh, when January and February come around, 
Uh, don't be surprised if uh, if the Falcons are the team that nobody wants to see. Yeah, that's what you always play for. And uh, I don't think we need to necessarily talk about Canisius and Robert Morris, but uh, the team. You know why? Team, why don't we need to talk about them? Because you, you need to worry about Air Force. That's right. right. It's all about us, Brian. <laughs> that's yep, right. That's exactly. Right. And uh, we will send a camera with the Falcons, as always. We'll bring the highlights from those two games for you. Back here, same time, when you want to watch us on GoAirForceFalcons.com.